Last episode, we won our first trophy with Barcelona, and it was the craziest game ever against Real Madrid. Take a look. Once again, it's a chance for Baldi. Whips this in. This time, he does find Robert Lewandowski. Oh, no. Benzema's done me there. De Stegen this time couldn't stop Asensio. Oh, the substitution happens. And just before we make the substitution, we concede. They've made a mistake. They've let him completely open. And Cesar Otero in the 90th minute. You can't write this stuff. The academy player. I see Rafinha in acres of space. And he's won the head of Courtois. What have you done? Okay, no, no space for Modric. Conde goes onto the floor. The cross is nice. Rafinha heading it back. And Cesar Otero taps it home. We also made our first superstar signing. Bernardo Silva. We paid over 100 million for him. It is now transfer deadline day. And we need to decide whether we need to make more signings to improve this team. Our team is looking nice. I think we've done a great job building it. But as they say. There's always room for improvement. Especially when you've got about 150 million left to spend. Also, in today's episode, the serious business is about to start. We've got an El Clasico again. But this time, it could be a La Liga title decider. Also, I think Champions League knockouts are going to begin in this episode. Things are about to get crazy. Drop a like on the video if you're enjoying this Barca career mode. Also, 50% of you guys watching this video haven't subscribed. Subscribe and join this amazing career mode community we've got right here. We're trying to hit 600k subscribers. Subscribers, if you guys could help me out, that'd be amazing. All right, decisions need to be made in this episode. Transfer deadline day. We signed Bernardo in the last one, moved De Jong to CDM. We've done what needed to be done to improve this team. But do we need to take it a step further? Do we need to make that one more signing on transfer deadline day? It's the big decision. Let's see what you guys think. Press conference. I feel like Voigt is pretty useless in the team. That is a harsh statement to make. You should probably consider bringing on a new right back, someone like Hakimi. Okay, can't lie, Hakimi would be an amazing signing, but with his Madrid pass, I just think it's unnecessary to do. Plus, I think we're being a bit harsh on Juan Foyt, or maybe not. He's had one assist in 25 games, 6.59 match rating. Okay, have we been a bit harsh on Juan Foyt? Because I think he's been, well, looking at his stats, not all that great. Maybe it's right to be a bit harsh with Juan Foyt. Oh, now that I look at his stats, I I'm worried. I'm worried. But of course, let's give him at least a full season before we decide to place and we've still got him on an attacking development plan to get that pace up and everything let's just hope it works of course if it doesn't next season will be when we of course replace him because i'll be honest i don't want to sign another player in this window i'm kind of happy with the team we've built i don't want to make a signing for the sake of making a signing so let's just be patient next up put cesar otero on the bench instead of your backup keepers keepers never really get injured and otero will grow in his overall talking about otero he really feels like the cult hero of this series man 16 years old 67 rated the man has just had an unbelievable start to life in barcelona seven games five goals and don't forget he scored a base in the last step against madrid like that's insane and i think it does make sense to keep him on the bench and that's exactly what i've done i am though really worried of the stegen getting injured if he does we might have to put otero in goal next up use gavi more often and play players that perform i think that's what we've been doing for example if kessie does not perform play someone else his boss has got many talents waiting for opportunities. Not gonna lie, boys. That's basically what we do. Kessie, again, didn't really do well in the first half of the season, so we dropped him to the bench, moved De Jong to CDM, signed Bernardo Silva. If players at Barcelona don't perform, we will look to replace them, and I think we've been doing that. That's why Davi, who's been really awesome to use, has been getting a lot of game time and will continue to do so. I feel like we are managing this club really well as of now. Player of the episode, and I can't believe a 16-year-old has just done this. Cesar Otero has won player of the episode for that race against Madrid. Unreal. While we're on transfer deadline day, I'm pretty sure there are going to be a few players whose contracts are expiring. I think we need to make a decision on them. For example, Marcus Alonso, Iñaki Peña, who's 23 and a decent keeper. Arnau Tenas, quite as good as Iñaki Peña as of now. Uh, this Alvaro Sanz guy and Hector Bellerin. I think we'll renew everyone except Marcus Alonso. Like, these two keepers could be useful. We'll try and renew them for the wages we're gonna have to pay for them my good god good thing we're barca and we've got the money we'll renew all of them quickly bearing it was a doubt but i think we should there's there's no reason for him to leave for for, for cheap 
but I'm not going to give him like crazy wages. In fact, we've managed to negotiate a wage reduction for Hector Bayerin, which is awesome. Sorry, Marcus, uh, we're not going to renew you. Deadline day, but as I said, I'm, I'm kind of happy with what we've done so far in this series. We've made three signings in the first season. I do not want to make more, but there are going to be offers coming in, and this one's for Alejandro Balde. Actually, a smart offer because they're offering us a good right back in return, but I don't want to get rid of Balde. These days, he's even playing it right back for Barca in real life, so very versatile. I, I want to make him the next Jordi Alba, you could say. An offer for Eric Garcia. This one's interesting, but as of now, on deadline day, I don't want to change too much, so, so we'll keep it as is. By the way, Eric Garcia has found himself in an interesting position. I don't think this season he's going to get much game time as a CDM, so I think I'm going to convert him back to a centre-back. Huh? The flip-flopping from me. But yeah, since we moved De Jong to CDM, it just does not make sense to keep Eric Garcia a, you know, CDM anymore. Also, what I'm going to do is put Frankie De Jong on a CDM development plan, but it's going to take a while for him to get there. Hedri linked to Manchester United? Are you kidding me? Oh my god! That might be the craziest offer I've ever seen! Pedri for 175 million Manchester United have brought out the checkbook. Oh my god, bro. If we try to negotiate, we could get upwards of 220 million. That is insane. But no, I am not gonna sell Pedri to Manchester United. Absolutely not. Even if it's 175 million. Absolutely not. But that is crazy that Manchester United can pull that off. Bro, that itself is enough transfer drama for me, man. Let's just get out of here. And with that, boys, transfer deadline day done. We're stuck with the squad we've got now, which can't really complain. I, I really like the team we've got. We're now getting towards the business end of the season where we've got games that matter a lot, like this one against Athletic Bilbao. Quarterfinals of the Spanish Cup. We're here and I want to take it seriously and Bilbao is a tough team. But of course, in the Cup, I am going to rotate the side a fair bit. A fair few players aren't fully fit, so we had to go with a lot of our starting 11 players anyway. And I just noticed Bilbao have signed Mitrovic, which is unrealistic because they only sign players from Basque regions. But hey, this is FIFA. Also, before we get into the game, if you guys want to get yourself FIFA 23 or Xbox or PSN codes for the best prizes, well, links in the description, s2g.shop and use code s2g10 at checkout. I wish we had a good left-footed free kick taker, man. I'm going to take it with... Usman Dembele for now. I just don't know if this is going to work. Oh my days. But I I'm trying something, yeah? I I I'm trying something, okay? I'm trying something. Let let's see if it works, okay? Two and a half bars of power. Usman Dembele. <laughs> I'm so bad with the new free kicks. Oh, oh, that touch was unreal. Oh my god, Dembele almost. Bro, we've given away a penalty. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? And Mitrovic is taking this one for Bilbao to Stegen. You need to save us. Oh, Athletic Bilbao take the lead. How are we going to bottle the Spanish Cup? Oh my God, this is it for us. This is it for us. It's the 87th minute. Robert Lewandowski needs to score this and he does. He saves our skin in the 90th minute and what a celebration from Robert Lewandowski. Let's go boys, 1-1. No way. This is going to penalties. Nothing even happened in extra time. I'm worried. Penalties are going to decide whether we go further in the Spanish Cup. Mitrovic for the second time scores. Okay, Kessie has been brought on and I do know he's really good with pens. Decent power. Right side bang. Come on. Come on. Let's save this one. Let's save this one. Des Stegen. What a save. And now it's Robert Lewandowski. Decent power. It's his, it's his style. This is his style. And he slots it home. Come on. We've got the advantage now, but the pressure's on. Can Destegen save again? Absolutely. And now Usman Dembele. I'm going to go for a finesse shot penalty. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that was lovely from Dembele. We saved this one. It's done. We're moving on to the semi-finals of the Spanish Cup. Can we save this? Oh, Ter Stegen, you've been absolutely wonderful in this penalty shootout. Off we go to the semi-finals of the Spanish Cup. We've now got some La Liga action ahead of us. It's against Real Betis. And we need to win this game because otherwise we're going to lose steam against Madrid. But it's a tough schedule we're dealing with with all the cup games, Champions League, La Liga. So fitness is a big issue. But we've got the squad to help cope with the situation. So I'm starting the likes of Otero, playing Kessie in CDM, having Christiansen start as well, play Balde. We're trying to manage it the best we can. Okay, looks like they've got a serious chance here. What did I just do? I pressed some weird button and something happened. Anyways, we survived. Oh, that's a lovely ball for Otero. Cut back for Ansu. We opened up the Real Betis backline so well there. 
Says Otero getting an assist and I'm too far to in the right place at the right time. Releasing this one for Pedri inside for Rafinha. Barcelona are playing liquid football right now. The way we're carving teams open, we're preparing for the Classico. But we do need to prepare ourselves defensively as well as Betis are on the charge. Balde makes a bit of a mistake. They still have a chance here. Shots taken to Stegen. Oh, I think Ansu could be through here. He's got a chance to kill this game off. Ansu's got a chance to kill it off. And that's exactly what he's done. A solid performance from Ansu Fati. And that's this game done. We, at the end, win 3-1. And look what we have here. Robert Lewandowski giving interviews about enjoying his life in Barcelona. We've now got Sevilla in the Spanish Cup final. This is like the last big team left in the competition after that. The final should be pretty easy. But first, we need to get through Sevilla. And this is a two-legged affair. But honestly, guys, with the Clasico coming up soon, I think I might rest a few of our best players in this one. At the end, I decided to not rest my best team. I'm going to play them in this game but at half time or something i'll bring them all off okay this is scary we might concede first the stegen saves oh wow i've just realized you can't make changes when you're doing the playable highlights thing that's one thing for you guys to note i think we've put ourselves in a bad spot for the classico now okay papu gomez could be through on goal he goes for the pass out wide for tetasito juan foyd saves us and volan looking for a pass and Sevilla with a chance this stegen saves us again this is bad look at this space araujo is having a track back really well he's done a good job i think but they still have a chance here cucurella puts the challenge in the attack's gone and it's now former barca player rakitic on it and Sevilla keep probing us they've genuinely been the better team in this first leg but we're surviving but in the 84th minute we give away a penalty and it's rakitic against his former club in the spanish cup can to stegen save that was the perfect pen. Guys, I might be trying something utterly ridiculous, but let's just give it a go. Lewandowski with something insane off the post. Can you imagine if that would have gone in? Not again. We've given away another penalty for Sevilla. Bro, what is going on? What is going on? We need to save this. We really need to save this. Rakitic to Stegen keeps us alive. That save could be worth a lot to us. Sevilla have really given us a tough time in this game, boys. And before the Classico, this is not ideal. They've now got a free kick, which they could score off the post. My God, what has happened in this game? Full time, we take the L. But remember, the second leg is there to make amends. It is now time for a game that could decide how La Liga ends up. We can really turn the tides now by beating Madrid at Bernabeu. If we do so, we'll go a couple of points clear of them. Looks like out of the players they've got available, they're going for their best team. So I think we need to do that as well. And that is the Gala 11, as they say. Let's do this. I didn't know it even snowed in Madrid, but it is snowing and the, the fans are ready for this one. And the stadium looks beautiful. Let's try and humiliate Madrid at the Bernabeu. The last time we faced them, the game was a classic, a 4-3, and it required a 114th minute winner for us. What is this game going to hold? But of course, the stakes are higher. We're fighting for La Liga. Conde making himself known with a classic derby challenge. Marine Benzema is on the charge, and oh, he's made a mistake. He's made a mistake. Cucurella saves the day. Benzema probably should have gone for goal. Pede Valverde, Vinicius, Modric, and what a save from De Stegen again. He's been our best player in this episode. Oh, we've got a free kick in an unbelievable position. Who do we take this one with? I think Robert Lewandowski is our best free kick taker. Can we curl this around the wall is the real question. Can we pull it off? Can we pull it off? Two and a half bars of power, please. Lewandowski. Oh, it's in. In and out. Classical. Robert Lewandowski has just scored a free kick. Unbelievable. That was sensational. In and out. Classical. Robert Lewandowski announces himself in the biggest game of the world. The most beautiful and perfect free kick. Have a look at that from Lewandowski. I love the new free kick system now. Oh my god, that was beautiful. Let's freaking go. Oh, Ansu there against Luka Modric. And getting past another one and another one. Ansu Fati's on a roll. He's going to go for a power shot. He got a bit too greedy there. Ansu, he's back on it now. Maybe a curling effort. Literally comes off Lewandowski. Lovely ball out wide for Furlong Mendy as Madrid have a chance. Oh, that was very risky from Foyt. Vinicius, now Furlong Mendy. And Mendy scores and Madrid get the equaliser. Oof, I'm glad Foyt didn't get booked or, or sent off for that because that was an ugly challenge. But, well, in the end, Madrid still scored and we're back 
on level terms. Can't lie, Bernardo Silva has been absent in this game. He needs to be doing a lot more. I mean, I know it takes time to adapt to a new league, but yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see the Bernardo Silva of Manchester City here. Oh, Pedri is just unreal. Crossing this one in. The cross wasn't good, but the dribbling is sensational. This has been one hell of a classical. Benzema is so freaking good, man. Benzema goes for gold. Vinicius saving us there. I think he blocked the shot. Not gonna lie, I'm feeling real bad about Bernardo Silva. It's 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 not working, at least in this game. I don't know. I don't think he's found that rhythm yet with us, but I'm bringing on Gavi. In a classical, I'm not taking a chance. Bernardo Silva, I think it's because he's not been able to adapt yet to our play style, but I'm sure soon he will. That looks like a really good ball for Lewandowski if he can... Oh, for Rudiger's so good. Looking for space himself as he finds Ansu. Ansu Fati scores in an El Clasico and it could be the winner as well. Barcelona lead 2-1. By the way, Gavi comes off the bench and provides an assist. Like, that is unreal. Foyth on the ball. By the way, I'll give him a ton of credit. Juan Foyt has done a stellar job to keep Vinicius quiet. We talked about replacing him. Well, he's now coming into his own. The fact that Luka Modric is 36 and he's still everywhere on the pitch. It's wild. What a run that is from Odriozola. Looks inside for Benzema. Benzema again. We've been opened up. Johnson Vinicius Jr. For once, it was the centre-backs that needed to cover him. And they couldn't. And Vinicius is dancing on us. Fair play. That was a good volley. Okay, 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 okay. Calm down. Good stuff, Araujo. Okay, now Madrid with a lot of pressure towards the end. Just Stegen with an easy save. That's that for this one, guys. Full time. We've got to share the spoils with Madrid. But this has made the title race even more interesting. With that result, we're still going to be third in La Liga. And the biggest winners are Atletico Madrid. As now they've created a three-point gap. But this title race is a three-horse race. Well, wait. I didn't even realize Villarreal have the same amount of points as us. And Sevilla aren't too far behind. We've got a crazy title race in La Liga. But for now, it's time for the Champions League round of 16 drop. Because we finished second in our group. It's going to be a tricky one. We could get teams like Liverpool, Chelsea, or even PS. SG, I'm worried. It's now time to find out, boys, who are we going to face in the round of 16? And it is Liverpool. Oh my god. We've literally got the toughest possible draw, maybe after the PSG one. This is going to be insane. Two legs against Liverpool. My good god. Liverpool are fighting in a tough title race, just like us, but against City. I'm nervous, boys. We're going to have this game in this episode. It's literally right after the Classical. We're up against Salah, Nunez, Diaz. They've signed Goretzka. They've literally got the Bayern former midfield. Great back line as well. This is going to be a tough one. Do I need to make any changes? I think Dembele is a bit you know, tired. So this is when a player like Rafinha can come through. Bernardo Silva, because of how he knows the Premier League, I'm going to start him. I want De Jong. Cucurella is looking a bit tired, but I think we still need to risk it. I will keep, say, we, we, we will keep Balde on the bench for Kessie for this one. Actually, for, for Bayerin. Makes a lot of sense. That's my team against Liverpool. Oh my God, the last time Barcelona faced Liverpool in the Champions League, it was carnage at Anfield. We need to erase those memories. You gotta remember, this is a two-leg tie. We can't go all guns blazing and end up defensively vulnerable. Let's be smart. Let's control the game. You know what? Maybe a finesse shot from distance. Those don't work anymore. Oh, Salah going for a finesse shot. Well, Ter Stegen saves. We have a lot of players in the team with Premier League experience like Bernardo and even Rafinha. So I'm hoping that will count for something as we've got Rafinha on the charge here. He's going to play it back for Bernardo Silva. Maybe a cross into the box. Oh, that didn't work. They've got good defenders. We can't be winning crosses against Konate and Van Dijk. Mo oh, Salah and Nunez really working well. Looks for Goretzka. Now Luis Diaz. Foyt has a job to do. They go back inside for Fabinho. This is worrying. Goretzka nope. with a chance. That is unreal from Ter Stegen, who's been on it from the start of the episode. Lovely ball out wide for Cucurella. Looking for that cross. Ansu. Konate took him out there. Lewandowski gets the shot. Allison saves. Trent now looking inside for Goretzka. Ter Stegen is outrageous. By the way, this has been Bernardo's best game in a Barcelona shirt. He is gliding through everyone here. And the passing has been on point as we find Robert Lewandowski through on goal. That might be the best assist of this series so far. And it is Lewandowski with an unreal finish as he strikes against Liverpool. 
Bernardo Silva deserves all the credit in the world for that. That finish was actually ruthless, man. The XG was 0 0.3. Lewandowski still slotted at home. But I think we need to show a bit of appreciation from when this move started. Look at Bernardo Silva where he is. This was unreal. First, he floors Darwin Nunes. Continues taking the ball forward. Gets it past Salah as well. Still Bernardo Silva. Then, of course, the cheeky pass inside. It was it was a brilliant move from Bernardo. Rafinha with the finesse shot. And Rafinha is stunning. Liverpool. Oh, my God. This feels like the Liverpool in real life. They're not the same dominant force they were before they, this is the liverpool that are like six seventh in the premier league in real life they just can't compete as rafinha launches a curler from like 25 yards out allison caught napping we're leading two nil in the first leg liverpool are absolutely modded but we know they've got the talent to still get back into this game and that's exactly what they're doing but ronald araujo showing his international compatriot how it's done that's a good ball in Araujo again, making no mistakes. This has been one of our most impressive performances, but if you look at the stats, Liverpool have kind of been unlucky. Their XG's been good. But on the pitch, it's a different story. I think we've been the dominant team. The decision to play the players with the Premier League experience has worked wonders, man. It's, they, they are running the show. Oh, we need to stop that to Stegen, bro. He has made three or four insane saves in this game alone. Like, the performance is otherworldly. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mo Salah's through on goal. Big job for Testegen. He is insane. Testegen, without him, this game would have been two all at least. Oh, we've given them back the ball and Testegen again. And finally, he couldn't stop them all. The amount of chances we gave away to Liverpool, crazy. And Robertson scores this time. They're back in it. They're back in it. All right, we've got another free kick for Robert Lewandowski. And I'm, I'm getting greedy now, boys. We're going to try something insane. Robert Lewandowski. <laughs> that was close. Friend. Oh, it's a good ball in. Foyt doing a really good job. I do not want to lose this game or even draw it. Because I feel like we've done enough to win it. But... Liverpool just keep coming with the chances. And now on the breakaway, we might be able to... Oh, they're so good, you know, to just cut those passing lanes. Goretzka's coming at us here. Now it's Goretzka again. What a strike into Stegen. He deserves a statue outside the Camp Nou. Oh no, Mo Salah late on in this game, making that run. They've got another chance in to Stegen, bro. What a player. Okay, Allison has been brought up for this goal kick. We're not letting him score. No, no, no. It's off the post. Pedri clears it away. That should be the whistle. <sighs> we survived. We had to hang on. The game at Anfield is going to be even crazier. With that, boys, we're going to wrap up today's episode. Job done in the first leg. In La Liga, it's getting intense. The business end of the season's here. And I'll catch you guys in the next one where all this drama continues. Drop a like, subscribe, and peace.